Hey there students, in today's video we're going to be talking about how to record closing entries in the accounting cycle. So we're going to talk about what are closing entries, talk about the steps you need to take to actually close an account. I'll give you my three-step process. Then we'll go through what journal entries are used to close. I'll give you the exact journal entries you need to close each type of account. And lastly, we'll go through a big practice problem so you can apply everything that you learned. Let's get into it. So first off, what are closing entries? Well, it's kind of how it sounds. So it's basically the very end of the accounting cycle. And these are the last accounts that you actually close out. Um, you get rid of them. They don't carry forward to the next fiscal year. So they do not carry forward the next fiscal year. And these are what we call, so these are called temporary or nominal accounts. There's two names for it. Now, not to be confused with permanent. So this permanent accounts do carry forward to the next year. But temporary or nominal, those do not. And usually, these are on the income statement. So the majority of the accounts, pretty much all of them on the income statement, are closed out. You get rid of them. Now, there are other accounts off the income statement that are also closed, but the majority come from the income statement, as you'll see below. Now, there's going to be a few exceptions, but we're going to go over the main types of closing entries that you need to know for either your class or whatever you're learning this for. So, these are on the income statement. Now, the steps you take, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that now. What do you do to close out accounts? So, this is actually a process I came up with a while ago that really helps a lot of students because steps really do help with any type of process. So step one, what you really need to do here is you need to identify all the temporary accounts. And there is a lot of them. Well, there's actually not a lot, but there are a few. And so you have to make sure you identify those and separate out the temporary from the permanent. And I'll go through what those are in a sec. But that is the very first step. And so step two here, you're going to go ahead and figure out the natural balance of these accounts. What do I mean by the natural balance? Well, I mean, is it a natural debit or is it a natural credit, right? Do you increase it with a debit or do you increase it with a credit, right? Because liabilities are credited, revenues are credited, um, assets are debited, right? Those are the natural balance of those accounts. First, you got to figure out the natural balance. Then the last step is you do the opposite journal entry to close. So what does that mean? So for example, let's say revenue, right? And I'll show you here in a sec with revenue. It's a natural balance of a credit. It increases with a credit. But to close it, to get rid of it off the books, you actually debit it to get rid of it. That makes sense, right? Because to increase it, you credit it. To decrease it or get rid of it, you would debit it. Yeah? So that's what you do. You First, you identify all the temporary accounts. You figure out the natural balance of those accounts then you do the opposite journal entry to close. Now I'm going to show you here the actual journal entries for each type of account. So these are the four main types of accounts you actually close. Revenues, expenses, dividends, and income. Now to close them, you first have to identify all the temporary, which I did for you here. Figure out the natural balance. So revenue is a natural credit, right? So to get rid of it, you would debit it. So that's why it goes up here. Now, where does it go? Well, it actually goes into another temporary account called income summary. It's the summary of all your income. Imagine on the income statement, this just goes into an income account because that makes sense, right? Your revenues increase your income, yeah? So what we're doing is we're getting rid of revenues and we're throwing it into your income account. Your income is going up, which is awesome. Now expenses, same thing, right? Figure out the natural balance, do the opposite. So expenses are naturally a debit, right? They increase with the debit, so to get rid of them, you actually credit them. And where does that go? It also goes into income summary. But if you think about it, income increases with a credit, right? We've already determined that here on the first one. So that means if we're debiting it, it's decreasing income, it's going down. That makes sense, right? Expenses decrease your income, revenues increase your income. 
So that's why expenses are credited here to get rid of them, and then it decreases your income with a debit. Hopefully that makes sense. Now dividends, so this is not on the income statement, right? These go on the retained earnings statement, but they're also temporary. You also need to get rid of them. So dividends, if you know what's the natural balance, it's naturally a debit, right? Naturally, you increase it with a debit. However, we're getting rid of it. So to decrease it, to get rid of it, you actually credit it. So it goes down here. And uh, once you credit it, where does it go? Well, it actually goes into retained earnings, right? We all know that already because on the retained earnings statement, that's where dividends are. They go on the retained earnings statement and it decreases retained earnings, right? Retained earnings is naturally increased with the credit. It goes up just like income. But since dividends brings it down, we have to debit retained earnings to bring it down. Now, lastly, we have to close out income, right? And so this is actually your income summary now, up until this point. So income summary, we know, is a natural credit, right? Because it increases with the credit. Your income goes up. But to get rid of it, you do the opposite. You debit it here. And where does it go? it goes into your retained earnings. Now, here's the thing about this last one. We're assuming this is actually um, income, right? So sometimes you'll have a loss. So I'll show you how that looks too. Let's say, I'm gonna copy this down. So let's say this is actually a loss. So it means you lost money on your income statement. Well, if you lost money, well, the natural balance of a loss, right, is the opposite of income, which income is a credit, right? It goes up with a credit. So a, a, a loss is actually a debit. So if the natural balance of a loss is a debit to get rid of it, you actually credit it. And what does that do? It decreases your retained earnings, right? Because it's a loss. You're not gaining money here. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's go through a big practice problem. You'll kind of see how everything ties together. I wanted to set it up this way because the practice problem will make a lot more sense now. So, DuPont Inc. ended their 2020 fiscal year with accounts that needed to be closed. They reported 10.5K in income, 82,300 in assets, 44,800 in revenue, 34,300 in expenses, 1,400 in dividends, and 31,100 in liabilities record the closing entries. So there's a few things here. So remember, what is step one? So step one, I'll make this larger here. We're gonna go ahead and identify the temporary accounts, right? Because not all of them are gonna be temporary. Some of them are permanent. Now the permanent ones, remember, they carry forward to the next year. The temporary ones do not close them out. So that's the very first part here. That's why you do it because there are some permanent ones in here. Income we know is temporary. We just went over that. Assets though, that's permanent. So make sure we ignore that. So the first one I see is 10,500 in income. And I'll just type it like this here. 10,500. Now the next one I see, not assets, I see revenue. So we'll go ahead and say revenue is equal to 34,300. The next one here is expenses, right? Because that's also temporary. Oh, sorry, not 34,300. This is 44,800. My bad. Expenses, though, is 34,300. Dividends, right? That's also temporary. We just went over that. So dividends is going to be 1400 The liabilities, that's also permanent. That carries forward to the next year. That's, it's usually a typical rule is that if it's on your balance sheet, it's uh, going to be permanent. If it's on your income statement, it's going to be temporary. That's usually the typical rule. So here's your temporary accounts. Now, the next step down here is going to be What is the natural balance of these accounts? So you can just kind of go through it with me. Income is a credit. Revenue is also a credit. 
expenses is a debit dividends ah. dividends is also a debit so now we have those and so now the next step is going to be let's go ahead and close them all out so let's go ahead and close these accounts all right, and so I'll go ahead and move it down here. So I'll say debit here. This debit and then credit. All right, we'll start there. So what's the first account we need to close? Well, we can go ahead and close out revenue first, right? Because we, we don't close out income to the very end. So let's go ahead and close out revenue. We know that revenue is a natural credit. So to close it, we have to debit it. And where revenue was going to be 44800 We debit. And where does it go? It goes into your income for 44800 Or we call it uh, income summary, right? That's the name of it. The next one here is going to be, we'll close out your expenses. So let's go ahead and close out expenses. That's going to be 34300 and then your, uh, and that's sorry, that's actually going to be, let's, before I do that, right? What's the natural balance of expenses? It's a debit. So what we do is we go ahead and credit it. And it goes into also to your income summary. It reduces it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to close out our dividends. So we know that dividends, we got to look at the natural balance. Dividends is a debit. So what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and credit it for 1400 Where does that go? It goes in to retained earnings for 1400 Now, lastly, we'll close out our income. Now, I already put income up here, but I put it so we could check it. And let's take a look. Income, we close it out. Remember, it's a natural um, credit, right? So to close it out, and this is a, a positive number, it's income, not a loss. To close it out, we move it into the debit category of 10,500, goes into retained earnings, right? Or 10,500. There we are. And let's make sure that's right. 44,000 minus 34,300, right? 44,800 is your revenue, minus 34,300. That's how you check it, 10,500. So that's how we know income is correct, goes into your retained earnings. So that's about it. Uh, I know it's a lot of stuff, but the step-by-step -step process is going to help you every single time with closing entries. We went through what are closing entries. We talked about the step-by-step -step process. We talked about the journal entries for each. Then we went through a big practice problem, so it all tied together. So if you enjoyed this and you got a lot of value, please like and subscribe. It helps support the channel. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.